Mazda isn't the car company that likes to follow the crowd. So when the company introduced their first three-row crossover back in 2008, they proclaimed it to be the driver's choice of the segment. So when an all-new version finally came out in 2016, we were able to verify that it still follows in those footsteps. So this week, Mazda has loaned me a 2018 CX-9 Grand Touring. However, in the wake of all-new competition, is this CX-9 still worthy of your consideration if you're looking for a vehicle in this segment? That's what we're here to find out. Like I said earlier, when this all new second generation came out in 2016, it was long overdue, especially with all the new competition that came out during that time period. And Mazda did right with the design of this car. It now rides on the Kodo Skyactiv uh, platform that we all know on the, all the other Mazda platforms, whereas the old one rode on the old Ford CD3 platform. It was essentially a Ford Edge. Now you can see for 2018, there aren't really any styling changes. It still looks identical to that last signature I drove. You have the Mazda five point grill dominating the front. Um, it has a chrome accent piece here that goes into the standard LED headlights, uh, which are swiveling adaptive on this particular one because of the Grand Touring. Uh, my tester also has LED fog lights. So you'll get that on the Grand Touring and up trims. And overall, I think the design is aged well. It still has a nice upscale, sophisticated look to it. Uh, over here is the housing for the radar sensor for the adaptive cruise control. And Mazda actually made this generation a lot lower and wider when they redesigned it. Uh, and the CX-9 is actually one of the bigger offerings in the segment. We'll go into that in a moment. Now, my tester being the Grand Touring has these 20 inch wheels as standard. These are also the standard wheels on the signature. If you guys go for a lower trim, you'll get an 18 inch alloy wheel as standard equipment. Now, when Mazda redesigned it, uh, they stretched the wheelbase by about two inches. It's now about 115 inches long. Overall length is just a tick under 200 inches long. That makes it around six inches longer than a lot of its competitors, but you wouldn't really know it. This car looks a lot smaller than its size would suggest uh, when you're looking at it from the outside. Now at the rear, again, it has the same kind of sophisticated appearance that we like on the front. Skinny LED taillights are included on this one with a chrome accent piece. And down here, you can see there's a nice dual exhaust with more some chrome finishes here to give it that premium sleek look to it. Now, the cargo area is very important in this segment of vehicle, and the CX-9, because it's bigger, you would think it has a pretty big cargo area. Uh, unfortunately, that's where the Mazda kind of falls short. With the seats up here, you're gonna get around just under 15 cubic feet of space, about five cubic feet short of its competitors. Now, you can fold down the third row seat here, and that roughly doubles the space, and then when you fold down the second row seats as well, which, by the way, you can't get a captain's chairs on this car like you can some competitors, it maxes out around 72, which is about the same as what you get in a Honda CRV. A Honda Pilot has roughly 20 more cubic feet of space. So uh, if you are looking for the most maximum cargo capacity, the CX-9 is definitely not the one for you. So if you guys purchase a touring model and up, it's gonna come with the company's smart key access system with push button start. No remote start is included from the factory. Mazda instead makes you buy it as a dealer accessory. But nevertheless, this key fob is definitely old. Uh, Mazda sh needs to be working on a replacement key, but it still feels good in your hands. Uh, it's still a nice um, size. Uh, but nevertheless, when you first approach the vehicle, it, for it works like every other intelligent access key. There's a button here on the door handle. If you touch this button, it locks the door. If you touch the button again, it will unlock the door. There's no sensor on the back of the handle like some of the competitors. But looking at the interior of the 2018 CX-9 Grand Touring, you can see it differs from that signature model that I showed you guys a couple of years ago where it had that auburn Napa leather. This is just kind of the parchment uh, leather interior. It's not the Napa. There's no cooled seats, just heated seats. You can see here your power window controls are here. I like the fact that the controls are actually accented in a silver finish as opposed to like the black plastic. Um, this parchment interior certainly looks good with a two-tone, but I am noticing some slight wear on the leather already. It's also showing a little bit of discoloration because this is the lighter color interior. But this interior of the CX-9 definitely still looks the most premium and the most sophisticated uh, in the segment, especially for a non-luxury brand. So Mazda is still kind of killing it there. Uh, what differs again from the signature I showed you, instead of the um, wood trim that they gave you here, the rosewood, you just get more of the piano black plastic. But nevertheless, this is a crossover, so getting inside the interior of the CX-9 is really easy. This car only has like 8.8 .8 inches of ground clearance, but it feels even lower than that when you get into the car. Now when you shut the door, 
it still sounds really solid, so there's that level of quality. Mazda really makes a great first impression when you look at the interior quality. Now to start the vehicle up, just put your foot on the brake and then touch this button here to fire up the engine. And the CX-9 was the first Mazda to introduce the actual head-up display projection that's in the windshield, so they're still doing that. Mazda is one of the few mainstream companies that still give you that feature. It's on the Grand Touring Miles and up. Now this 2.5 liter turbo, it's still a very smooth engine, uh, and it actually has a really nice uh, low-end power curve, which is re really great uh, in this type of vehicle. We'll go into the test drive later on. Now, looking at the rest of this interior, I'm still really impressed with the uh, quality in here. You can see the dashboard is all soft touch. There's some real aluminum trim here with some chrome splashed throughout. It's a really nicely designed interior. It's a very sophisticated, premium look to it as well. The instrument panel here, you can see um, this was the first Mazda to get the color LCD display right here which is definitely nice. Um, all the other Mazdas are starting to have that feature trickle down to it. Although Mazda could benefit from having a full LCD, um, some of their competitors offer that. The door panels here are also soft touch, just like the dashboard. Um, there's some hard plastic right here, but more aluminum trim on the door handle there. It's nice and padded right here where it's leather, and then the leather stitching goes throughout the handle here, which is nice. Although, it would be nice if Mazda gave you a little storage compartment here for your phone. The windows are one-touch automatic for both the front and for the rear, so that's really nice. Mazda gave you one-touch on all four. There's some nice storage down here for cup holders and a little bit more storage right there in the door pocket. The steering wheel, it is heated, but it's only heated on the actual bolsters right here. Um, the top and the bottom of the steering wheel is actually not heated. It's, you know, a newer steering wheel design. I think it looks really great. There's no paddles on the wheel, which is surprising considering Mazda considers themselves to be the sportier entry in the segment. Um, over here, you can see there is some storage right here, a nice little cubby here. There's no wireless charging. Um, there's a little sport mode. Uh, switch toggle here, which is great. Um, this controls the Mazda Connect head unit, which I've shown you before. There's some cup holders here. Storage space in this car is definitely lacking. Also, this huge center console takes up space right here. It looks great, and Mazda designed it this way because you have to have make room for the controller here where it kind of sits right here in your hands. But some competitors definitely offer more storage solution like the Honda Pilot or the Toyota Highlander. This is padded right here uh, where your elbows will rest. It's also somewhat on the smaller side, but you do get two USB ports in there and an aux port which is good. Um, a standard sunroof on this trim. There's no pan of roof. Mazda doesn't offer that uh, as well. Um, the seats, I find them to be very comfortable. Uh, they are perforated leather, uh, although the Napa leather that's in the signature is a little bit more comfortable. Now, when you put the vehicle into reverse here, you do get a backup camera with front and rear parking sensors on this Grand Touring trim, which is nice. Mazda doesn't really offer any traditional like, different views. There's no 360 camera available on this car. It doesn't even offer a trajectory, which is definitely strange. It's lacking in the technology features there, but although Mazda is working on updating this, the new uh, 2018 uh, 6 will offer a 360 camera. Now, the Mazda Connect head unit here, I'll go over this briefly. You can see here pushing the nav button here down here on this little display will bring up the navigation display. You know, it's kind of like a TomTom Garmin-based aftermarket looking navigation system. You know, it works relatively well. The graphics of the map aren't, you know, super, super impressive looking, but it gets the job done. Um, I, I do think that it's time Mazda needs to you know, work on updates to their head unit. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto still is not included. When you push the home button here, you can see there's your different sources. Application here isn't apps that you're thinking of. It's just showing like your fuel economy, um, HD traffic map, and then vehicle status. It doesn't have like the apps like Pandora on that department. You have to go to sources here. Uh, hit audio sources and then that will show you Pandora and Stitcher. Uh, but once again, Android Auto and Upper CarPlay is frustratingly missing. The overall display is good. It works. It actually does allow you to use it as a touchscreen if the vehicle is in park. If it's moving, you have to use the command controller. Uh, but overall, I think Mazda definitely has an interior that will impress a lot of people when they first get in. It's just when you start digging deeper, the tech and the Mazda Connect head unit, this is the larger 8-inch display, could use an overhaul. Uh, it's missing features like cooled seats. It's missing a panoramic sunroof, which would be nice. But other other than that, the storage solution here is a little bit lacking, but if you can kind of get past that, you're going to really, really like the interior uh, of the 2018 CX-9. Now the second row of the CX-9 is going to be a really important consideration if you're looking for a family vehicle like this, but 
getting back here, you can see there is pretty good amounts of leg room. Now, if you're the middle passenger, unfortunately, there's a nice hump here that you're going to have to navigate through. And I noticed that the actual position of the seat is raised up a little bit, so I found it to be a little bit uncomfortable. But if you're sitting in one of these seats, you can fold down this armrest here that has a nice cup holder. There's some good storage here with two USB ports actually built into the armrest, which is nice. Um, Mazda also threw in some features on the Grand Touring. There's heated rear seats with three level. There's your own set of climate controls here. And then there's also a nice little privacy shade here on either side of the door, which is nice. Now, in terms of the materials, um, there's soft touch actually on the door panels and more of that leather stitching. There's also two level map pockets here on each side. So that's really good. You can put your, your phone in this one and then something else in the lower portion here. The seats themselves, they also kind of moved forward and back to give third row passengers a little bit more space. Um, and you can also recline them as well. So Mazda did a pretty good job with the second row, but let's hop into the third row and see if they were also um, good at maximizing the space for this in interior. So accessing the third row in the CX-9, it isn't quite as easy as some competitors like the Pilot, whereas like the Honda gave you a button that automatically moved the seat forward. Mazda gives you a little lever here that you have to pull and the seat will kind of move forward and then you have to push it and slide it out of the way. Now, one area that I don't really like is when you put the seat back, it returns to a position that honestly you would never leave it in uh, because you couldn't actually get a passenger here. You have to also slide the seat all the way back. But nevertheless, when you want to get into the third row, I'll get back here just for comical purposes. So I'm not very tall, but going over to this side here, you can see this seat is all the way back and my knees are pretty much touching uh, the back of the seat, whereas you can definitely get more space uh, in some competitors. And unlike some of the competitors as well, Mazda only puts two people back here, whereas something like the Honda Pilot or the Traverse allows you to put three across where you have eight passenger seating. But I mean, overall, you can see the floor is a little bit on the higher side. I would be comfortable back here on a shorter trip, um, but it does feel a little bit claustrophobic. Uh, so if you guys actually need to put actual adults in the third row, you may want to check out some of the CX-9's competitors. So under the hood of the 2018 CX-9, things haven't changed from the 2016 model that I showed you. There's still one engine choice, and this was the first application of the new turbo motor in the Skyactiv engine family that Mazda is introducing. In fact, they're putting this all new engine in the new six for 2018, which I am looking forward to showing you guys. It's the 2.5 liter Skyactiv G gasoline direct injection four cylinder with a dynamic pressure turbo. It still makes 227 horsepower if you guys cheap out and use regular, 250 horsepower if you, put it, if you feed it with the good stuff, premium. Uh, uh, but it makes a lot of torque, 310 foot-pounds, which is the most torque uh, for the base engine segment, really, in, in the class. Uh, and fuel economy is pretty good. This all-wheel drive model is rated at 20 city, 26 highway. It still goes out through a six-speed automatic transmission, uh, all-wheel drive, like I said. Uh, this car weighs roughly about 300 pounds less than the old model, uh, around 40, 4,300 pounds. But we'll get out on the road and we'll see how it all performs. So over the years, I've definitely driven the CX-9 multiple times. I drove the refreshed first generation. I drove the second generation when it first came out a couple of years ago. But after driving new rivals like the Atlas, the Pilot, the Highlander, the Acadia, let's see how this 2018 uh, CX-9 feels in comparison. So in typical Mazda fashion, this is still one of the sportiest driving uh, crossovers, family crossovers in this particular segment. I mean, um, after driving so many of them, the Mazda still feels refreshingly small. This is a big vehicle, as I, guys, as I mentioned before, but when you get behind the wheel, it feels like you're driving just a bigger Mazda 6. This car really hides its mash so well uh, when you get it out here uh, on the actual real world. And this thing accelerates and drives and feels a lot more premium than a lot of its competitors. I mean, it has a 2.5 liter turbo engine with 310 pound feet of torque. And honestly, all of that torque is just available at such a low RPM that you barely have to put your foot down and this car just kind of accelerates really quickly forward. Now, I do feel the lack of horsepower a little bit when you're at the higher you know, higher speeds. Um, this car can feel a little bit more or less potent. Uh, the engine also doesn't make the most pleasant sounds at times. It's, it reminds you that you're just driving kind of like a four cylinder, um, but when you put your foot down here, the 
transmission will still kind of short shift, but man, once it once it shifts into that 3,500 to about 5,000 power band, this thing just has a lot of pull. You can push, you can feel it push you back into the seat, uh, and it just kind of accelerates really nicely. Now. The six-speed automatic transmission in this car is definitely a down a few gears com compared to some of the competitors. I mean, um, now that there's like a 10-speed auto that I've driven, this is down four gears, but Mazda's six-speed auto still does a pretty good job of picking the right gear. I do notice that sometimes maybe it could use two more gears. Um, perhaps Mazda's working on a new transmission, but getting up to highway speeds here, the CX-9 is just an excellent daily driver. It's an excellent highway companion. The ride is definitely on the firmer side, but it's not overly harsh. Um, some competitors are definitely on the you know softer side, but I prefer this you know more stiffly sprung setup that's just more sportier to drive. Now, in terms of driver assistance, Mazda made their low-speed collision avoidance a standard uh, for 2017 or last year, um, so it has that low-speed function. Um, the Touring models will all basically give you the full driver assistance suite and up which is definitely nice. Um, this car does have active lane keep assist, which doesn't really actively lane keep you as, or keep you in the lane at some competitors, but the blind spot you can see is included on the touring models and up. It works well. It also shows it to you in the head up display. Uh, and this car is overall just, you know, a really fun to drive crossover. And you never thought you wanted a fun to drive family vehicle until you drive something that Mazda offers you. Uh, and it kind of just reminds you that this is a company that tries to, you know, forge its own path. They don't like to follow the norm. Um, you know, and visibility in here is still good. You have a really good view out of the front. The side mirrors also are pretty large. Um, the hood is nice and low. The view out of the back can be a little bit restricted because of the small windows. But other than that, once you get used to it, which honestly, uh, you can kind of just get in this car and just, you know, enjoy driving. It doesn't really have much of a learning curve in terms of the drivability. Maybe just the views out of here because it is a bigger vehicle, but it doesn't feel like that when you're behind the wheel. Now, one thing Mazda did update uh, for 2018 is they did add full speed range in the adaptive cruise control setting, whereas the 2016 model that I showed you, the cruise control would shut off at like 20 miles an hour. This now will come to a full stop and hold you there, which is definitely nice. It's now kind of addressed my one issue I had when that, with this car when it first came out. Now, Mazdas are all about driving, so it's amazing how when you start pushing the CX-9 through some corners here on this off-ramp or on-ramp, I mean, there's a little bit of body lean, but the steering really talks to you. It's alive. You can feel exactly what the front tires are doing. And it really just encourages you to play. That's the one thing about this car, about the Mazda way, that is so appealing to a lot of enthusiasts. This is where you feel a little bit of the horsepower kind of lacking because the transmission will short shift at 5,500. But it's a nice quick shifting six speed auto. And honestly, the power is plentiful because most people aren't gonna be driving this thing with their foot to the floor all the time. It, it, again, the mid range is very satisfying and that's the most important aspect uh, when you're driving a crossover like this, a family vehicle. You're not pushing the engine. The engine's not screaming like it does in something like a Honda Pilot where you know you have to get into the VTEC range, um, which is definitely not the norm in terms of driving style for you know a family vehicle like this. But let's talk a little bit about the fuel economy of this car and a few other numbers. Now, the CX-9 is rated at 20 city, 26 highway, and I've actually been averaging around 90 19 and a half miles per gallon in my week's worth of driving. That includes a mixture of city and highway, mostly city where I have my foot to the floor. On the highway, I did get it up to around 28 miles per gallon, which is pretty good. Uh, Mazda could introduce, you know, more gears in the transmission. They could introduce start-stop, um, you know, to kind of increase the fuel economy. Cylinder deactivation is what they just introduced in the base 2.5 without the turbo, uh, which is like the only four-cylinder with cylinder deactivation now. But other than that, I mean, the fuel economy is pretty much right in line with all of its competitors. Um, it's, you know, so you're not really saving too much in terms of gas uh, by going with this turbo, but you just get lots of low end torque and it's a very refined uh, engine. Uh, and it's still a really pleasant overall driving feel. This is still very much the driver's SUV of the segment. So when I drove the all new CX-9 back in 2016, I proclaimed it to be my favorite in the segment of family three row crossover. So how do I feel about the CX-9 two years later? Well, after driving out of its refreshed competition, I'm happy to report that the CX-9 still represents one of my favorites in this segment. It's still one of the most fun to drive vehicles in the class. It's still got a really torquey engine that you don't have to push hard, as you guys saw in the test drive, where it has all the meat of the power van right down low, which is kind of where people are gonna be driving these anyways. The interior is still luxuriously appointed, one of the nicest cabins you can get in the segment, although it is missing a couple of features, like the panel sunroof and the cooled seats, which I'm hoping Mazda will consider adding when they refresh this car, hopefully 
hopefully for 2019 or 2020. However, the only thing where the CX-9 kind of falls short is the interior storage space in the front seats where it's a little bit lacking and the actual space you get in the cargo and the second and the third row is a little bit smaller than some competitors. But if you don't actually need all that space and you prefer something that's the, that's the sportiest to drive that has the best looking in interior and exterior, the CX-9 is definitely gonna be uh, high up there at the top of your list if you're looking for a vehicle in this segment. So what's it gonna cost to put this CX-9 in your driveway? Well, Mazda has been kind of upping the price over the years, just like every other manufacturer. This now starts at 32,130 for a two wheel drive sport model. Uh, if you guys wanna upgrade to all wheel drive, it's gonna cost you around $1,800. Uh, a touring model, which is kind of the mid grade is like around $3,000 more. That's probably what most of you are gonna buy. Um, all in, you're gonna be right, right around 38,000 for a touring with all wheel drive. Now this grand touring model uh, has a bunch of extras on it, like the head up display, the 20 inch wheels. Um, this one stickers for around 43,000 with destinations. And keep in mind, there's also a signature trim that kind of adds some Napa leather and some additional lighting for 45,000. Um, all in, I mean, this makes the CX-9 kind of right there with all of the class leaders. Uh, in terms of price. It starts a little bit higher, but I will argue that Mazda gives you a lot of equipment. It's got the best looking exterior and interior, and it's definitely different. You don't see too many of these on the road because Mazda, honestly, they moved around 2,300 units last month in March, or in, in February of 2018. If you compare that to a pilot, Honda moved around 12,000 units in that same time period. So there's a reason why a lot of people aren't buying these, but honestly, it's been doing pretty well for Mazda. It actually outsells the 6 and the CX-3. Uh, and if you, again, if you want something different, this one, will definitely be high up there on your list. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 CX-9 Grand Touring. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.